what I found so convincing across the board in the science is about sleep. Mm. And that is really across the board. I mean, it's screwing up our nap times for our toddlers and it's screwing up definitely our bedtimes for our teens. Um, so there's, if there's one thing to hold the line on and be old school about, it's really devices in the bedroom and having that wind down time before sleep. Um, because it has these different, you know, lots of different mechanisms for it. But basically, I think that's important to recognize. And our kids need sleep so much. And one of the very small saving graces of this time has been many of our teenagers are able to sleep in and get their allotted hours. Yeah. And that just is so helpful for so many things. Yes, it's amazing. Yeah, my my um, almost 14 year old, she doesn't have to do her morning meeting until nine in the morning. It's like, yeah thank goodness. Like that just yeah. makes sense. Like, let's do that. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of ways that it's messing up our sleep. And so it could, for a toddler, it can mess up sleep before a nap time. If it's like right before, when is that like, what do, what do parents of toddlers want to watch out for there? Oh, that's a good question. So, um, I just think a kid that's very revved up, uh, from watching, yeah, a lot of exciting stuff in the afternoon might have it had a harder time going mm -hmm. down for a nap. They also might drop the nap too soon because they're just, um, overstimulated in general throughout the day and they're not getting restful sleep at night. And you know, with toddlers, it can have a rebound effect where they're more wired the next day and more explosive. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, um, it, you know, it's going to depend on your, your family's routines. You know, if you want to just like hold a, hold a stop to it before dinner time and, and make sure that there's plenty of time after dinner to unwind. What are the effects of screen time that we're seeing on maybe elementary or older kids, middle school and high school? Sure. So, um, you know, I think Obviously, the needs of our kids as they get older um, translate out more into their peer, their peer interactions and their development as social beings, right? So um, we become more concerned with their digital interactions with cyberbullying, um, with um, you know negative types of interactions, negative self comparisons, negative self talk. Are they using social media kind of to that in a way that makes them feel bad about themselves? Or um, with video games, you know, is it a place where uh, there's a lot of kind of um, uh, hazing type of conversation, very kind of angry conversation that can go on between boys sometimes, um, similar to sports. I mean, trash talking is a thing in games, just like it is in sports. Um, and so thinking with our kids, thinking with our kids, talking with our kids about um, how do you like to socialize online and, and what, are the, what are the ways that feel good and what are the ways that feel not so good and how do you, what do you do when someone says something you don't like or they text something to you that you don't like? Do you have a language for talking about that or resolving conflicts? And just helping our kids become more skillful um, on that, I think, is, is pretty key. And then, you know, on the margins, um, besides the sort of sensitive kids that we talked about, um, certainly we're hearing way too much about anxiety and depression amongst the tweens and the teenagers right now. And um, I think it's fair to say that social media can be a vehicle for those feelings. It can be a place where you go um, and you, you can feel better about yourself or worse about yourself. Um, but, you know, certainly the diving into kind of the one-way consumption um, is hardly ever going to organically make you feel better. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we certainly all have rituals of self-care where we say like, oh, there's a comedy movie or there's a song that I listen to that makes me feel better. Um, and we can share those with our kids as well and help them, you know, understand how media consumption can, can be contributing to wellness. We can talk to them about reaching out to friends and extending support to friends as well. Um, but uh, I think we would, we do want to watch for like a dynamic where a kid feels unmotivated to do anything other than be on their device and then being on their device brings them even lower. Catch new episodes of the Mindful Mama podcast and other free resources, including the Mindful Mom Guide at mindfulmamamentor.com. You can listen to every back catalog episode, including interviews with Dr. Dan Siegel, Ianla Van Zant, Sharon Salzberg, and get meditations, join our private Facebook group, and more. Go to mindfulmamamentor.com now. I'll see you there.